In this video, I'm going to explain how to use prime factorization to find the greatest common factor of two numbers. Okay, suppose I have two numbers, 30 and 45, and I want to know what is the greatest common factor that the two of them have. First of all, what does that mean? So let's list out all the factors of 30 and 45. Now that we have a list of both the factors of 30 and the factors of 45, we can go ahead and see what common factors there are, meaning what factors both numbers have. Both numbers have factors of 1, 3, 5, and 15. Now remember that we're looking for the greatest common factor, or the largest common factor. So of these four common factors, 1, 3, 5, and 15, which is the largest? The largest of the common factors these two numbers share is 15, so that means the greatest common factor, or GCF, of 30 and 45 is 15. Now let's see what happens if we find the prime factorizations of 30 and 45 and compare them. Let's compare these prime factorizations, 2 times 3 times 5 and 3 times 3 times 5, and see what both of them have. They don't both have a 2, they do both have a single 3, and although one of them has a second 3, the other does not, so that's not shared, and they do both have a 5. So the shared elements of their prime factorizations are 3 and 5, and you'll notice that the product of 3 and 5 is 15, which we already found to be the greatest common factor of 30 and 45. The takeaway here is that we don't have to list all the factors of two numbers to find their greatest common factor. We can find their prime factorizations, and the product of their shared elements will be the GCF. Let's look at another example, finding the GCF of 80 and 200, starting by finding their prime factorizations. Now we can compare 2 times 2 times 2 times 5, and 2 times 2 times 2 times 5 times 5. What elements of these expressions are shared? Both of them have three twos, and while there's a fourth two in one expression, that doesn't show up in the second expression, so that's not a shared element. Similarly, both have one five, but there's no second five in the top expression, so that's not a shared element. So the elements that they share are two, 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 and five, the product of which is 40, the GCF of 80 and 200. Now let's see what would happen if we wrote these prime factorizations with exponents instead of repeated multiplication. So we'd have 2 to the 4th times 5, and 2 to the 3rd times 5 squared. You can see that both expressions have a base of 2 and a base of 5, meaning both of those things will show up in the GCF. Then we can look to the exponents to see how many of each element we'll need, following the smaller exponent of the 2. So if we see that the top expression has 2 to the 4th, and the bottom 2 to the 3rd, that means we know they only share 3 of those 2s, and so 3 is the exponent we'll use. Similarly, we have 5 squared and 5, or 5 to the 1, meaning we follow that smaller exponent and just have 5 to the 1 in our GCF. Using exponents can be a helpful and quick way to find the GCF, but it's also fine to write out the repeated multiplication if that helps you visualize the shared elements. Let's look at one more example, finding the greatest common factor of 35 and 38 by first finding their prime factorizations. Now we can compare the prime factorizations, 5 times 7 and 2 times 19, and we can see that they have nothing in common. These two numbers have no shared prime factors. So what does this mean for the greatest common factor? Let's remember that the greatest common factor is the largest number that can divide both of these numbers. So the only number, the largest and only number, that can divide 35 and 38 is 1. And we can confirm this by listing out all the factors of 35 and 38. For 35, we have 1, 5, 7, and 35, and for 38, 1, 2, 19, and 38. The only, and thus largest, number that they share is 1. Before we wrap up, I want to put a question out there for you to think about. Now you've seen how you can use the prime factorization of a number to compare it to other numbers and find similarities between their factors. How do you think you could use prime factorization to find similarities between the multiples of numbers? If you're curious to find out about that, check out my next video.
hope you enjoyed this video and thank you so much for watching.